Meet Lester, my travelling Ted. I'm sure lots of you have heard of or read The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho, but it was reading his first book, The Pilgrimage, aged 17, staying up all night enthralled by the mystical spiritual journey that I first learnt about the Camino, the ancient pilgrimage to the shrine of St. James in Santiago de Compostela in northwest Spain. So fueled by teenage angst and wanderlust, I stayed up all night reading and even packed a bag in the hope that I would gather enough courage to steal off in the middle of the night and walk across Spain like Paulo Coelho. I didn't. Not then, at least. But since then, I've become accustomed to traveling solo, yet with my faithful friend gifted to me at birth, I am never alone. And I always feel at home on the road. Indeed, it was having read a book as a child about a girl's journey to the Amazon rainforest that I was inspired to learn Spanish. And I knew from then, the age of 10, that I would one day embark on my own adventures to South America. And indeed, I realized this dream when studying Spanish for my degree, I spent my year abroad living, teaching and traveling in Peru and celebrated my 21st birthday in the Amazon. And then my first Christmas away from home in Cusco and subsequently sleeping on bus station benches in Bolivia, hiking in the highlands of Scotland and in the Alps in the south of France as an au pair last year. Lester is always along for the ride, always by my side. <laughs> And so, finally, it was inspired by Paddington Bear, the famous bear from deepest, darkest Peru, that I was inspired to start the travel blog, Lester's Adventures Documenting Our Stories and Advocating Against Injustices We Encountered Along the Way, especially education for girls during the chaos of COVID. See, no one survived unscathed by the pandemic and things ground to a halt for me when so anxious to do things about things imperfectly, I kind of stopped trying and lost interest in life. Mm, so taking a leave of absence from my studies this time last year, I barely had the energy or motivation to make it up a flight of stairs. It seemed unlikely that I would make it across the Iberian Peninsula by foot. But when it felt like I had nothing left to give, I had my dreams to fall back on and I remember Paulo Coelho's journey. And so I went on a spiritual search to regain my sense of humanity, to experience life in all its grim and glorious guises. And so finally, this summer, we set out fundraising for the Sacred Valley Project, a girls' secondary education initiative in the Andes and very close to my heart. We embarked on the ancient pilgrimage, starting in the foothills of the Pyrenees. My 35 litre backpack, 38 days on the road with him, we covered 500 miles. Walking has always been my medicine. I am in my elements, out in the elements, under the stars and the sun. Compostela means field of stars. With the wind and the sea, Lester always comes with me. But what is the day like? What is a day of a modern day pilgrim like? Who walks and why? I met a blind man. Lifetime partners, humans learning how to be whole after breaking with their other halves, fathers with grown-up children and mothers with young kids. And since Paulo Coelho's book and a film starring Martin Sheen, pilgrim traffic increases annually, threatening the spirit of solitude and spontaneity. But luckily, due to the restrictions, the multitudes were more manageable this year and always finding some lingua franca, English, French, Spanish, Italian, I was able to converse with individuals from all over, learning their stories and motivations for walking, which were more often than not, not religious reasons. 
I loved the simplicity of the routine along the way, the Camino's anglicized name. That no day and every day was the same, always bursting with life. We celebrated the mundane and minuscule details, the seemingly banal became sacred somethings to treasure. Passing through fields and farms, from cathedrals to churches and literally traversing mountains and motorways. We covered an average of 15 miles a day and prayed we wouldn't be struck down by tendonitis. Plastering, plastering and popping each other's blisters, strapping ankles and knees. I saw some truly terrible toes and hellish heels, red, raw and pussing. Some of my friends soldiered on in their sandals because they simply couldn't squeeze into their footwear. Although to plaster or pop, to moisturise or not, opinion was divided by old wives' tales and personal convictions for how to treat or tame such literally sticky situations. While some practised a fastidious foot care routine, lathering in Vaseline or massaging in oils, my mornings were comparatively minimalist rising before the sun to avoid the beating afternoon heat, brush my teeth, repack my backpack, albeit awkward, awkwardly, and don my double-layered socks, a technique that I had read about while scrolling endlessly on online forums for how to prepare for a pilgrimage. The answer? Come as you are. And with an open heart, Compelled to confront the present, forced to exist in the moment. Every step was a divine encounter with the holy trinity of slow travel, body, mind and spirit. After some nonsense with my knobbly knee in the first week, then drained emotionally from the vastness of space and time spent in my own head, then from a month miraculously relatively unscathed, feet pounding the paths and the pavements, the toxins trickled down, collected and released where our feet meet the earth and a veritable blister bonanza exploded 80 miles from Santiago. But it was the overwhelming sense of companionship, community pride united by the road that brought tears to my eyes, not the blisters. They were just symptomatic of the seismic spiritual shifts evolving en route. A detoxification process of sorts, I'm convinced. I loved the camaraderie, bumping into fellow pilgrims after having walking syncopated for so many weeks, whose faces lit up, greeting each other as if we'd known each other for a lifetime. And maybe we have in another lifetime. In fact, the serendipities and synchronicities along the way were alarmingly abundant, almost otherworldly, a sacred slipstream along which we could seemingly speak things into existence. I did, and manifested, avocados, Dutch friends, water fountains, and the blessed compedes. <laughs> Indeed, we experienced pilgrims opening their hearts and homes in the most humbling of ways. And this namaste of sorts, the salutation, buen camino, exchanged, a proverbial doffing of one's sweat-stained hat, a sign of mutual respect. I acknowledge your joys, your struggles, your pains, because I am walking the same path as you, literally and in compassion. So after having walked for 35 days, we, along with the world and his wife, it seemed, arrived in Santiago for the feast day of St. James, the 25th of July. And honestly, it was overwhelming and anticlimactic. And our pilgrimage culminated in quite a frantic blur as we continued and raced another 60 miles to the end of the earth at Finisterre and to make it back to Santiago Airport within the 72-hour validity of my PCR. I remember on the penultimate night crying on the phone to my mum, 
tears running down my cheeks, having walked for 35 days, almost five weeks. And there were still 20 miles left on the last leg, and I was on my last legs, absolutely spent. But we did it. However, wisdom on the road declares that your Camino journey starts at the end of the road to Santiago. So what did I lose? Apart from sensation in my right big toe and the nail of the toe next to it, well, maybe not lost entirely, but loosened slightly, this tightly wound anxiety, constantly considering what other people think or expect of me and striving to keep up or compete because I learned that we all journey better when we walk at our own pace. Also not lost, but the knee brace and head torch, which had been crammed in the back of my backpack for 400 miles, gifted to friends in need. Because you see, it doesn't come naturally to me sharing. So in that seemingly insignificant act, I learned how liberating and empowering it is to release that which no longer serves us. Daring to let it drift away so we can embrace and courageously incorporate life's lessons. So, lighten the load and ship back home the unnecessary excess and emotional baggage. Having said that, every pilgrim needs a staff. Plus, mine made me feel like a girl version Gandalf or Amazonian warrior woman. And the reassuring thud of my adopted third leg, I call her Paloma, gave me faith to believe in my own strength and the courage to know when to reach out when we need someone to lean on. So the Camino taught me to travel through life with grace and humility, to journey with generosity and to adventure on in the face of adversity. And with Lester, to maintain childlike curiosity, looking at the world with awe and wonder, because not all who wander are lost. And we learn by living, as my heroine Eleanor Roosevelt said. And I pray that by living my life to the full, I can heed my call to ensure that everyone, especially girls, have access to their rights, their human and inalienable rights to learn. So inspired, by my modern day Paddington, I remember my adventurous spirit ignited as a child by the power of reading and my Camino journey was a microcosm and a metaphor for weaving the narrative threads of life, recalling the intricately interwoven Andean tapestries and the current education crisis. As such, my embodied and metaphysical journey has taken on a meaning far greater than my teenage dreams could have conceived. And Lester and I achieved and exceeded our fundraising ambition, supporting the girls schooled by the Sacred Valley Project in Cusco. And my every step, therefore, on my camino was a salute to the commutes undertaken every day by girls and women on their way to school. I graduate soon, in June, from the University of St Andrews. And I am compelled by a moral imperative to use my privilege as a platform, a call to action, to say something, to do something. And yes, it was grueling and uplifting, exhausting and exhilarating, filled with freedom and friendship. But it's been what I've learnt after my Camino, what I loved, sharing what I lost and learnt, that has been the chance to reignite my zeal for life. And now, revived body, mind and spirit, 
I realize how I must use my voice to reach out to the ends of the earth, going with my traveling Ted, my ever faithful friend, to speak up for our sisters and brothers. So yes, at first, initially, it was an opportunity, a meditation, a motivation for rehabilitation for my body and soul to regain strength. So then, with introspection, it was a reaffirmation of my dedication to education advocacy. And as kids, we cut our hands around a conch, bringing it to our ear, contriving to hear the sea. And I wear my scallop shell the symbol of the fisherman St. James, to remind me of my Camino days and the power we all have every day to listen and heed the petition of the paths we are each called to travel so that we can advocate and pave the way for future generations. <laughs>